Really cool skincare, tried it out, let's discuss. Well, hey guys, in today's video, as per your request, I'm going to be reviewing prequel skincare. This is not sponsored, and like I said, I bought these products myself. None of this comes from PR. Starting out, Glenzer. This is a gel cleanser. It has glycerin in it, which is a very hydrating ingredient. It also has cocomidal propyl betaine, a mild surfactant that you will encounter in many tear-free shampoos. Oat flour, which oats, if you are new here, are packed with wonderful hydrating ingredients and they also help with cleansing. Arginine, a natural moisturizing factor naturally present in your skin that, like glycerin, can help overall with moisture retention. Gentle enough to use around my eyes to wash off eye makeup. And guess what, you guys? This passed my cleanser test. But one little test I do to get a sense of a cleanser is the mascara test. Basically, I will wash my face with a cleanser in the shower without using any makeup removing balm, oil, makeup removing wipe, nothing of that sort, just the cleanser in the shower. If I step out of the shower and I have raccoon eyes, mm, this passed the mascara raccoon eyes test. They advertise it as having a pH of 4.5, which is actually great. It is more on the acidic side, which is beneficial for people who have eczema prone skin, atopic dermatitis. Harsher cleansers with a higher pH can end up being disruptive to an already impaired skin barrier. The overall texture of this, it's a little bit thick as you spread it over the surface of the skin. It's a little thick, chunky. I have experienced this with other glycerin-based gel cleansers before, but as you spread it over the skin surface, it starts to work up into a mild, silky lather with a little bit of creamy foam to it. And importantly, it rinses off the skin easily, doesn't leave behind a residue, and it leaves the skin clean but feeling hydrated. You're just looking for a basic everyday cleanser to wash your face, and you don't wanna get down with using a cleansing balm or cleansing oil, can't be bothered with that. This is a good option. $18 for 13 and a half ounces. Moving on to their Urea Advanced Relief Moisturizing Milk, a 10% urea lightweight lotion that can be used not only on the body, but on the face. Urea is naturally found in skin's outermost layer as a natural moisturizing factor. It's hygroscopic, so it helps improve water content at certain percentages, a bit higher than what is in this product. It also can be keratolytic, meaning it can dissolve glue between dry, stuck together skin cells, helping with exfoliation, but long-term consistent use of a lower percentage in the 10% ballpark can help improve water retention in skin's outermost layer, ultimately improving accumulation of dry skin. Also has niacinamide. Now, I'm not sure what the percentage is here. Remember from my videos on niacinamide that really one to 5% is great, but anything much higher than that, you do start to increase the risk of irritation. So I'm not really sure, but niacinamide is an excellent ingredient. It is an antioxidant, it's anti-inflammatory, but it actually can help improve your skin's production of components of the skin barrier. So it's great in a moisturizer. This also has glycerin, again, hydrating, and shea butter to help reduce water loss. Super lightweight, really feels nice on the face. On the body, also very lightweight. This is a good lotion to consider for the summer months because it doesn't feel heavy or greasy on the skin. It absorbs very quickly. If you're someone who finds that heavier moisturizers make you feel overheated because they may slow down the evaporation of sweat, limiting the cooling of your body, try this out. It's very lightweight, but also very hydrating. It does not burn or sting, at least for me, although those kinds of outcomes can be um, very individualized. Urea is an ingredient that for some people does sting. This doesn't have any sort of odd odor to it. Like all of the products in this line, fragrance free. Number three is their Barrier Therapy Skin Protectant Cream, a colloidal oatmeal based moisturizer thicker in consistency compared to the urea lotion we just discussed. Colloidal oatmeal is a skin protectant, meaning it helps with improving water retention in skin's outermost layer, and it also helps limit penetration of irritating things. If you have an impaired skin barrier, if you have underlying atopic dermatitis, you've got a filaggrin deficiency, you have those hyperlinear palms, lots of little lines on your palms, you're prone to dry skin, colloidal oatmeal is great. And I find it is less likely of an ingredient to sting. It doesn't feel greasy on the skin. 
This product, in contrast to the lotion, does not have niacinamide. I'm pointing that out because I do know that regardless of the percentage of niacinamide in a product, some of you find that it is irritating and you're always on the hunt for niacinamide-free products like moisturizers, etc. This one does not have it, so this would be another option. And like the lotion, it can be used on the face, the body. I use it around my eyes as a moisturizer. I've said this before, the moisturizer you use on your face should be more than fine around the eyes. Like the lotion, it is very lightweight. It is not a super rich, heavy cream. So if you're somebody who likes a really rich, thick formula. This may be a little too on the lightweight side for you. Did leave my skin feeling moisturized, hydrated, didn't dry down with a tight film. The following day, my skin was moisturized. It doesn't feel greasy, sticky. There's no odd residue. $18 for 10 ounces. And then in the realm of moisturizers, we have a thicker, greasier ointment. Their skin ointment, 45% petrolatum, which is amazing for reducing water loss. This is a type of product you might wanna choose if you're someone who likes to do the slugging method. In contrast to plain 100% petroleum jelly, aka Vaseline, this is not as greasy. It's a little greasy, but not super greasy. It feels a lot less greasy. It also has dimethicone, which may cut down on the greasiness of this while also acting as a skin protectant. And this has bisabolol, which is anti-inflammatory. Now, I really like this. I tried it on my face numerous times, even though I don't normally do the slugging approach. Works well. I will say this, it goes for eight $18 for two ounces. If you're somebody who uses a lot of ointment at baseline, like you do the slugging thing every night, or you basically exclusively moisturize with 100% petroleum jelly, a lot of people do that. I like using it all over my feet at nighttime. This might start to get a little pricey for you, and the return on investment in comparison to 100% petrolatum petroleum jelly might not quite be there. However, if you're somebody who hates just doing 100% petroleum jelly, you find it too greasy, um, this might be a great option for you, especially if you don't use a ton of it. It's something you just keep on hand as a skin protectant. Maybe you use a little bit here and there to reduce chafing from time to time. This is a great option. Number five, the universal skin solution. This is a hypochlorous acid spray. I have some videos here discussing the utility of hypochlorous acid. It is something that is naturally made in the body to fight off infections. It is anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial. There's not a ton of research on this ingredient for dermatologic use, but it is of interest. It is used in skin surgery to cut down on the risk of skin infections. It is um, something that has recently been investigated actually in the setting of hair transplant surgery, helping to cut down on wound infections and improve healing. Um, and there's some literature using hypochlorous acid to reduce itch associated with atopic dermatitis. So where I actually find hypochlorous acid sprays to be the most useful is in uh, cutting down on itch related to atopic dermatitis, especially sweat exacerbated itch. So for my own personal use, I use it when I am, when it's hot, humid, super sweaty, um, I spray it on my skin. It helps cut down on that sweat-induced itch for me, and I suggest it to others. Hypochlorous acid is also antimicrobial. Uh, anti Therefore, if you use it under your arms and the skin folds, it can help cut down on bacteria that break down your sweat and lead to body odor. You can also use it on your feet. If your feet tend to become malodorous when they get sweaty, that's one way to use it as well. Now, when it comes to hypochlorous acid, the formulation does make a difference because depending on the pH of the product, it can influence the relative abundance of hypochlorous acid in the formula. I think they said this is sitting at a pH of 4.5, which is going to make it so that the hypochlorous acid is very stable. Um, whereas at a pH less than 3.5, the hypochlorous acid concentration tends to drop. Greater than 5.5, you tend to get more of what is called hypochlorite. It's a lot of chemistry, but all that to say, 
This seems to be a well-formulated hypochlorous acid spray. <clears throat> this one is a little expensive in comparison to the one I normally use. This one is $17 for four ounces, whereas the one I normally use by SkinSmart that I've talked about on here before is $17.46 for eight ounces. Never been sponsored by SkinSmart. That's just what I use. They both seem to be about the same in terms of how they work out for me. They're both good, but I'm just pointing that out there. You can develop an irritant contact dermatitis from hypochlorous acid. Acid. Of course, you can develop irritant contact dermatitis from pretty much anything you put on the skin, but I do want to point that out as yet another reason why really consider, is this something that is truly going to benefit you in your routine or is it just, you know, maybe superfluous and if anything ends up putting you at risk for irritant contact dermatitis, but it is a good product if you're on the, if you're on the hunt for a hypochlorous acid spray. And I don't really think it's that expensive in general. Okay. Let's talk about their vitamin C serum, Lucent C. This one is $23 for one ounce. You know, vitamin C serums can be quite expensive. This particular serum uses ascorbic acid, which is the form that has the most research behind it in terms of anti-aging benefit, helping with sun damage, and also helping with hyperpigmentation. The issue with ascorbic acid, I always point out, is that it has uh, stability issues and it can be limited in terms of its ability to penetrate and the formulation of the product is key. And it's always hard to know to what extent a product is formulated correctly and the product will actually deliver ascorbic acid in any meaningful way to your skin. So this has ferulic acid, which has been shown to help improve ascorbic acid stability. It has niacinamide, which as a reminder, I have a recent video comparing niacinamide to ascorbic acid. They do have overlapping benefits for the skin. So check that video out. But I've always, you know, found that niacinamide alone works just well for me. I don't really do much in the realm of ascorbic acid serums due to the question of penetration and stability. But I have used this just to try it out and I didn't find it to be irritating. A lot of ascorbic acid serums irritate my skin, especially um, ascorbic acid serums like this, which, are, which have an acidic pH of 3. Point, this one's 3.2. That, that 3.2 is a great pH in theory for allowing good penetration of the ascorbic acid, but it can be more irritating. This product warns against using it around the eyes where the skin is more delicate, more prone to irritation. I, like I said, I didn't experience any irritation with this. One of the problems with ascorbic acid, if you've ever used it, is that it oxidizes with time, exposure to air and light, and it can turn this orange yellow color did not have that issue with this product, I should say, but it does have that vitamin C serum smell. Uh, people describe it as hot dog water. The smell of the actual product is not what bothers me, but rather as I wear it throughout the day, it's the way my skin smells. I can smell my face and it has that smell. If you've ever used a sunless tanner, that kind of toasty smell. I get that with ascorbic acid serums, including this one. It's just a personal like uh, kind of thing. If it doesn't bother you, if you've been using ascorbic acid serums, shouldn't bother you. Now, like I said, it does have niacinamide. So it could just be a niacinamide serum with a little bit of ascorbic acid that may or may not get into your skin, but it's not a product that has caused me any issues. So overall, I can't really say anything bad about it. Moving on to my favorite category, of course, in the realm of skincare is their sunscreen, the sun barrier. This is a zinc oxide sunscreen, so inorganic and it is a sunscreen that does not have niacinamide. For those of you who are sensitive to niacinamide, it has centella. Centella asiatica extracts are anti-inflammatory, may be helpful for wound healing, as well as helping cut down potentially on oxidative stress. It also has tetrahydrodifluoryl methane and another similar sounding compound. These come from turmeric, they're anti-inflammatory. Now, if you have a deeper skin tone, it may leave a white cast, as do most zinc oxide sunscreens, leave some degree of a white cast. I will say, however, I did experience a little bit of pilling with this when applied over the Lucent C. Even after allowing the Lucent C to absorb dry fully, waiting 30 minutes to put the sunscreen on, I did get a little bit of pilling. 
And if you have ever experienced peeling, it can be very frustrating. Check out my video on why that might occur. Um, SPF 50 for $22, um, that's pretty good. You know, a lot of brands, they don't invest up front in doing a sunscreen because it, there is a high cost associated with developing a sunscreen. You have to put it through testing and everything. Moving on, they have some newer products that are intended for feet and hands. Their Foot Rescue is a foot ointment for dry, cracked heels, and it's got salicylic acid, 5%. Urea, 15%, which is a keratolytic strength, meaning it will dissolve the glue between those dry, stuck together skin cells that are making your callus so prominent. It also has 2% malic acid, that is an alpha hydroxy acid that can be very hydrating. It is in a petrolatum base, along with glycerin, which is hydrating. The Carousel Intensive Repair that I always recommend is kind of similar to this, but in contrast to this, the Carousel one, stays in place a bit better, feels a little greasier on the skin surface in comparison to this. Maybe it's something different with the petrolatum to glycerin ratio. Both of them work pretty much the same in my experience. So if you're somebody who um, is looking to rejuvenate the look of your feet, try this out. I do caution, you may wanna be careful not to use it every single night because it does exfoliate that callus. And if you're someone like me who works out a lot, you run, you walk, you're on your feet a lot, you might find that using this every day cuts down on your callus to such a degree that you end up getting blisters. So I only use things like this a couple of nights a week. The best way to use something like this is after you get out of the shower or tub, put this on to, to the feet that you've just pat dried a little bit. So it's not like there's a visible water on the skin surface, but at the same time, because you just got out of the shower or tub, the stratum corneum, which is quite thick on the bottoms of your feet is hydrated. Great time to put this on, really will allow for those ingredients to penetrate that thick callus and to get in there, help to hydrate the skin, improve shedding of that dead stuff, smoothing out the skin surface. After you put it on, and you don't need a lot, you don't need a ton, just a thin film. After you put it on, cover with socks. Now, they sell some little socks on their website I did not purchase. You could just use plain white cotton socks, but the socks didn't look to be too expensive, so if you want to have some fun prequel socks, maybe you wanna throw that in there as well. That is a good way to use a foot ointment such as this. And then last but not least is their hand wrap shielding lotion. This is $14 for 3.4 ounces. Like again, everything in this line, fragrance free. Now, hands are often neglected territory. They really benefit from frequent moisturization throughout the day, frequent use of moisturizers, especially if you do a lot of wet work, you use your hands a lot at work. If you're in healthcare, you almost have to be carrying a hand moisturizer around with you because you're washing your hands so much and all of that repeat re-wetting of the skin makes it more vulnerable to water loss. Definitely check out my videos on hand eczemas and dry cracked hands, my tips. And if you'll recall from those videos, one of them of course is to consistently moisturize. Hand shielding lotion. The premise here is that the dimethicone in this is going to protect the skin of the hands from irritants getting in, which can further weaken the barrier. The thing about this that I think a lot of people will really like is that it is very fast absorbing. You put it on and it does not leave your hands greasy. So you can go about your texting on your screens just fine. I will say it is very light. And if you are in the throes of really dry cracked hands, you would probably benefit from using just plain petroleum jelly to the hands at night under gloves. But for throughout the day, when you can't be bothered with all that, it's too messy. This is a great basic hand moisturizer. I have rather enjoyed. You know, when I read hand shielding lotion and I saw glycerin and dimethicone, I was thinking the consistency of this, oh, it's definitely going to be probably very similar to some other hand creams I love, adore, and rave about that have this characteristic texture. Namely, Neutrogena's Norwegian Formula Hand Cream or uh, La Roche-Posay Cicaplast hand cream. They have this characteristic, almost glove-like feel on the hands, but fast absorbing, non-greasy. 
they're clear, they're colorless. This, on the other hand, was a bit more in the box of lotion-like creaminess. So just different in texture than what I was expecting. Um, but a good product. All right, y'all, those are all of these skincare products from Prequel. I think actually the prices are pretty good. The formulas are pretty good. I would say as far as the moisturizers, they all are a lot more lightweight in consistency. So if you are seeking a richer formula, whether it be for your face, for your body, um, these may not meet your needs. However, if you are looking for something that is lightweight, but also really hydrating and good for dry skin, I think you would really like these a lot. All of the products meet a specific need, um, and I really appreciate that. As far as the, the price overall, I paid $170 for all of these nine products plus $14.06 in tax. So that comes to $184.06 for nine products. And they do not skimp on the ounces of products. These are pretty sizable volumes, if you will, of product. The packaging is attractive to look at. It's not unsightly and it's not cheaply constructed. The labels are clear. They stay on, they don't slip off. It's almost like a drugstore skincare brand with the price point and the logical ingredient families, but you know, kind of in its own league as far as you buy from the website. As far as I know, that's the only place you can buy it. But I could be wrong. I didn't really look uh, anywhere else other than I figured I'd just buy it directly from the website. Let me know if you have tried anything from Prequel, what you thought about it, what your experience has been. But I look forward to seeing what more they come out with in the future. Maybe they will even come out with a retinol. We shall see. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.